Welcome to the ultimate iPhone vs cinema camera comparison. Out of all of the cameras on the market, I feel like the Sony FX30 and the iPhone 15 Pro are the best to compare. The FX30 is an entry level cinema camera with all of the juicy cinematic features and it's hands down one of the best cameras I've ever owned. Because of many reasons, not just the image quality. And believe it or not, but the iPhone 15 Pro is also an entry level cinema camera. If you don't believe me, they filmed an entire Apple event using just the iPhone 15 Pros. And it's the best camera for I've ever used and again not just because of the image quality. We are currently going for a camera and film revolution and it's more important than ever to decide whether you should jump on that bandwagon or not. Because this is not just a camera comparison, it's a lifestyle, convenience and evolutionary comparison. So let's get into making that decision as easy as possible. Design and build quality. First of all, the iPhone 15 Pro is made out of titanium and it's extremely solid. If you drop it, it will survive in most scenarios. Whereas a cinema camera, if you drop it, I think it will end pretty badly. I have dropped my cinema camera twice indoors from about waist level and it survived both falls. But if it had fallen on concrete, I think it would have ended a lot differently. As for the design, we are comparing two completely different designs. And that's what makes this comparison so unique. The iPhone is just so convenient. You can carry it around in your pocket. You don't need to carry around an extra bag to fit it in. And you can use it easily with one hand. It also has lenses built right into the phone. A 13mm, a 24mm, a 48mm and a 77mm. And on the Pro Max, you even get a 120 millimeter lens. There's an f-stop of 2.2 on the 13 millimeter, a 1.7 on the 24 millimeter, and a 2.8 on the 77 millimeter, and the 120 millimeter on the Pro Max. The fact that it has three prime lenses fixed onto the phone instead of one big zoom lens means that you're going to have stunning quality, lots of bokeh, and good light. And the low light is going to be amazing compared to a zoom lens that goes from 13 millimeter all the way to like 77 or 120 millimeter. The only thing is that any zoom in in between the fixed focal range is going to be digital zoom. Compared to a zoom lens where all the zoom in is done within the lens and not the camera cropping the image. To match the focal range on the iPhone 15 Pro, I need to carry around two lenses with my FX30. I have the Sony 1.8 11mm lens and the Sigma Art 24-70mm. You can get a 14-24mm to, to cover that beginning range, but if you had the 14-24mm f2.8 and the 24-70, that means you've covered the entire range of the iPhone 15 Pro. But I do need an extra bag to carry the camera and the lenses because it won't just fit in my pocket like the iPhone 15 Pro. For filming yourself, most DSLRs, including the Sony, make things easy with an articulating screen, where you can see what you are shooting from just about any angle, including from the front. What is perfect for filming yourself, whereas on the iPhone, it is relatively hard to see what you're filming when you aren't directly behind the screen. There are ways to see yourself, and I've made a whole video dedicated to filming yourself on the iPhone 15 Pro, so feel free to watch that after this one to learn how to film yourself in a cinematic way. In terms of waterproofing, the iPhone is splash, water, and dust resistant and my Sony FX30 is protected with extra seals to prevent failure caused by dust, raindrops and water splashes. Another thing to mention is because the iPhone is so portable and small, you can get it into establishments and events where you can't get in with a DSLR or interchangeable lens and you still have all the cinematic features of a cinema camera. Display. A side-by-side -side comparison shows the screen on the iPhone 15 Pro is much bigger at 6.12 inches compared to the 3 inch screen on the FX30. Resolution wise, the iPhone 15 Pro has a resolution of 2556 times 1179 pixels and the Sony has that fully articulating touchscreen with a resolution of 2360 dots and I've never had a problem with the quality of that screen but unlike the iPhone you won't be using it for anything else apart from monitoring and checking your settings when filming they are both bright and big enough to see what you're filming but the Sony does have an advantage with that articulating screen the color accuracy on both are great and now that the iOS update has added in that level to help frame everything up which is a great addition that big cameras like the Sony FX30 have always had as default. The user interface on both are pretty much the same when filming in fully auto. They both have the ability to change the settings you're most likely to use, like exposure compensation directly from the screen. Camera performance. Let's begin with the iPhone 15 Pro. This pocket sized device offers an array of impressive video features that makes it a versatile choice for many filmmakers. It's equipped with 4K video recording at multiple frame rates, from 24 frames per second for that cinematic look to 60 frames per second for smooth motion. In addition to standard 1080p recording, the iPhone 15 Pro introduces cinematic mode that captures 4K HDR footage at 30 frames per second, delivering that desirable film-like quality. You can even explore action mode that offers 2.8K video recording at 
60 frames per second for high speed sequences that has increased image stabilization. The iPhone 15 Pro supports HDR video recording with Dolby Vision up to 4K at 60 frames per second, ensuring breathtaking dynamic range. And if you're aiming for professional grade video quality, it even offers ProRes video recording at up to 4K at 60 frames per second. The iPhone 15 Pro can also film in log, giving you the option for advanced color grading. The image without log enabled is also great for color grading. And I've made a LUT pack specifically for the iPhone. You can add the LUTs directly to your footage for a cinematic look. Click the link in the description to get your hands on it. The iPhone 15 Pro also has a versatile macro video recording option and includes slow motion and time lapses in a couple of swipes right from the camera app, making it a versatile option for many shooting scenarios. It also has a night mode time lapse feature. And with stereo recording, audio zoom and true tone flash, you can elevate your audio and lighting. It also has impressive image stabilization that you can adjust to your own filming needs. Let's dive into the cinema camera. It offers 4K video recording at 120 frames per second at 280 megabytes for stunning quality. It oversamples UHD 4K using 6K capture, delivering remarkable detail at up to 60 frames per second. Plus it has in-body stabilization, 10-bit color options, and a cinematic S Cine tone profile. The option to shoot in S-Log3 and upload LUTs straight to your camera is an incredible feature, not to mention 16-bit raw video output for extensive post-production editing. The iPhone 15 Pro is versatile and user-friendly, perfect for vlogging in short films. It boasts features like true depth camera and ProRes video recording, but on the other hand, the Sony FX30 is a cinematic powerhouse, ideal for pros who crave superior quality and creative control with 16-bit raw video output, S-Log3, and LUT support. Your choice depends on your filmmaking needs. I also need to mention that the lenses on the iPhone 15 Pro use different sensors. The 24mm lens uses the prime 48 megapixel sensor, whereas the other lenses use a 12 megapixel sensor. But you won't notice the difference unless you're really looking for it. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of what both cameras look like. Comparing the two, we see that the iPhone 15 Pro is incredibly versatile, making it suitable for a wide range of applications, from vlogging to short films. It's user-friendly and accessible. Operating systems. The operating system on both the iPhone 15 Pro and the Sony FX30 are great to use. You do have the option to use a bunch of apps on the iPhone 15 Pro, like the Blackmagic camera app, which lets the user have more control over settings like focus and the option to shoot in H.265 when filming in ProRes RAW, what is a much smaller file size compared to filming on ProRes with the default camera app, what is defaulted to 422HQ when filming 4K 30 frames per second. Apple says that one minute of 10-bit RAW ProRes footage takes up around 1.7 gigabyte of storage for a 1080p 30 frames per second clip and when shooting 4K at 30 frames per second it is 6 gigabyte per minute of footage. It is huge. Because the ProRes log files are so big, you need to shoot with an external SSD so you don't run out of storage. But the cinema camera doesn't have any internal storage. You have to get an external SD card which fits snugly into the SD port. There are two slots on the FX30 so you can film all day without a problem. Navigating through both devices is seamless and they can also film log in fully auto. What is perfect for beginners and people who don't want to keep changing the settings when filming. Battery life. Battery life on the iPhone 15 Pro has impressed me a lot. I've been going all day with it without an issue. The only time I've had a problem with it is when I'm using it as a hotspot for my laptop. Then it does go down pretty quickly. Whereas on the FX30, I can go through a battery in about an hour and a half of filming. With DSLR cameras, you need to carry around extra batteries. But then again, with the iPhone, once the power's out, you can't change the battery. So you'll have to have an external power bank and a rig to hold the power bank in. Storage options. As mentioned previously, on the iPhone 15 Pro, you will have to have an external SSD if you're shooting in ProRes RAW. You simply plug in the SSD and the iPhone will film directly to it. But when shooting without ProRes, you should be fine with just filming directly to your phone and then airdrop the files to your laptop at the end of the day. With those two SD slots on the Sony, you can film all day without a problem if you have two high storage SD cards. Connectivity and ports. The iPhone 15 Pro is the first iPhone with USB-C, but there is only one port. So you will need a dongle if you want to attach other accessories like an external SSD, a microphone or an external monitor. The cinema camera has ports for just about everything you need from HDMI to AUX. Software and ecosystem. On the iPhone 15 Pro, everything is within the same ecosystem. If you're someone who likes to create content for social media, then the iPhone 15 Pro is going to be your best bet. You have all the social media apps you post to all in one device, like YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram, as well as the option to edit all of your footage right within your phone with an editing software like CapCut. But on the cinema camera, you'll have to put the SD card from the camera into your laptop and edit the footage, and then export it and post it to your desired location. 
price and value for money. For the iPhone, you aren't just buying a camera. It is also a phone where you can make calls, play games on, and use it as a map to navigate places. And because we're in the 21st century, you could even make your money back by working from your phone. The Sony is incredible value because of the features it gives you if you are serious about filmmaking or content creation. The value to price ratio is exactly the same between them. It just comes down to the lifestyle you live and what suits your needs. User experience. Out of the two, the iPhone 15 Pro is much quicker and efficient to capture video with. Not only is it more convenient to mount to tripods because of its lightweight, but you can open the camera in seconds by pressing the camera icon from the home screen. Whereas the cinema camera takes quite a while to load. Let's compare them to see how long each one takes to turn on and film. So I was just doing the comparison to see which can turn on faster and film, but it turns out the Sony is actually way faster than the iPhone. The iPhone also has those fixed lenses, so there is no need to ever switch the lenses like on the Sony. But this is also an advantage for the Sony, because you can add a whole range of different lenses to give you different looks, as well as some impressive focal ranges. For example, putting an 800mm lens on it. With the phone and the DSLR gap closing every year, it can make the decision between the two really difficult. But there is still a big difference between the usability and use case of both devices. I can see myself filming fully on the iPhone in the future, but purely because of my personal work flow. I only make videos that go out on YouTube and social media. And the portability, storytelling and time saving is something I've chosen over the top of a little bit more image quality. But if I were to be making films with a longer turnaround times like documentaries, or if I wanted to come across as more professional, then I'll choose the cinema camera. Because if I rock up to projects with just an iPhone, firstly I'll probably get asked where my camera is, and I'll get perceived a lot differently than if I showed up with a cinema camera. But in all honesty, one of the main reasons I still use the cinema camera is because of the articulating screen. In some situations, it makes filming so much easier. And I'm excited to see the iPhone 16 because there is already rumors that there's gonna be a screen on the back of it. So will that mark the end of DSLR cameras? Let's talk about it in the comments. Subscribe for more videos about the iPhone 15 and smash that thumbs up button if you made it this far. Peace out.